So as I mentioned earlier, there are now about a dozen or so excellent studies, clinical trials exploring the use of single or two session psilocybin treatment in that 25 to 30 milligram range, which seems to be the most effective dose for long lasting relief from depression. Each one of those studies explored something different as is important. Replication is also important, of course, in order to validate previous studies. But for instance, there have been comparisons of psilocybin versus SSRIs or other antidepressants. There have been comparisons of psilocybin plus psychoanalysis or cognitive behavioral therapy versus cognitive behavioral therapy alone or psychoanalysis alone. And so there's a lot of evaluation now of the clinical outcomes and the statistical outcomes of these subjective measures and even some objective measures of neurochemistry where that's possible in terms of trying to understand if and how psilocybin is effective for the treatment of depression. And the major takeaway is that indeed it does seem to be the case. And the numbers that I feel comfortable not throwing out there, but putting out to you reflect my conversation with Robin Carthart Harris. Again, that will be released soon at hubermanlab.com as well as takeaways from what I would say are the six broadest studies, meaning they had the widest range of age groups, the broadest demographic in terms of the subjects, their backgrounds, their levels of education, men, women, ethnicity, et cetera. And a lot of that can be summarized in the paper entitled Effects of Psilocybin Assisted Therapy on Major Depressive Disorder. This was a particular randomized clinical trial, but in the discussion, I think they summarize it quite well, which is that if you look at the number of people who take this 25 milligram dose twice in sessions spaced about a week apart, what you will find is that anywhere from 60 to 75% of the people who have major depressive disorder, who do these psilocybin sessions in the proper setting, report a good experience with it, have minimal adverse events coming out of those sessions and in the weeks following, those people experience substantial positive relief from major depression in ways that other treatments that they've explored, including antidepressant drugs, cognitive behavioral therapy, and other types of therapy alone could not provide. Now it's a general feature of these clinical trials focusing on psilocybin that people are asked to stop taking their antidepressants prior to participating in the trial. It's also a general feature of these trials that people are encouraged to not suddenly start their antidepressant treatment immediately afterwards because of course that could confound the results of the psilocybin treatment. However, and this is a very important thing to note, all subjects were encouraged not to avoid taking those antidepressant medications if in fact their clinician felt that it was important for their immediate and long-term survival. So you know, no one should be reckless in thinking about what to add or delete from their drug protocol when dealing with depression, all right? The outcomes could be very severe in that case. Nonetheless, we can paraphrase from the discussion of the paper I just mentioned, because it really highlights the incredible results that psilocybin applied in these particular therapeutic settings are providing. And here again, I'm paraphrasing. The present trial showed that psilocybin administered in the context of supportive psychotherapy, consisting of approximately 11 hours of psychotherapy. So this is gonna be two sessions of the psilocybin with proper therapeutic support produced large, rapid, and sustained antidepressant effects. The effect sizes reported in the study were approximately 2.5 times greater than the effects sizes found in psychotherapy, and more than four times greater than the effect sizes found in psychopharmacologic depression treatment studies. In other words, four times the positive effect observed with typical SSRIs or other pharmacology of that sort. These findings are consistent with the literature that showed that combined pharmacotherapy and psychotherapy were more efficacious in the treatment of major depressive disorder than either intervention alone. So again, this points to the fact that combining drug therapy with talk therapy, as it's often called, is going to be more effective than either treatment alone. Here, the drug therapy is psilocybin therapy. And again, please don't take the fact that in these studies, they tended to ask people to not take their antidepressant medication heading into the study as a sign that one should stop taking their antidepressant medication. Rather, I think this study and other studies like it, again, which we'll provide links to in the show note captions that are discussed extensively in the episode with Dr. Carter Harris soon to come, really point to the incredible role that psilocybin can have in 
creating an experience inside of the session, the journey or the trip as it's called, as well as initiating neuroplastic events, perhaps the addition of dendritic spines, maybe even some new neurons, maybe, although I don't think that's the predominant mode, but that leads to these more extensive connectivities in the brain, the so-called reduction in modular networks, enhanced activity in brain areas that normally wouldn't be talking to one another, but not doing that in any kind of haphazard way. It really does seem that the one or two sessions of psilocybin that induce these feelings of ego dissolution, that induce these feelings of oceanic boundlessness, right? So mystical. Right? And in many ways, it's what I find so incredible about psilocybin and other psychedelics is that despite the highly mystical, highly subjective, and still at this time, somewhat top contour understanding of how they might exert their effects. You can highlight boldface and underline might there, right? Because it hasn't really been firmly established what the exact cell biological rewiring events are. But there is now what I would refer to as a center of mass of data that point to the fact that psilocybin, when taken in the appropriate set and setting, at the appropriate dosages, can invoke the sorts of neuroplasticity and changes in emotionality in perceptual experience, not just during the psychedelic session, but for long periods of time after the psychedelic session that can provide really remarkable relief from things like major depression and perhaps other psychiatric issues as well.